Welcome to my channel, I'm Gary Wuryawan and today I want to show you 5 tips on how to take better pictures using Micro Four Thirds camera. Let's go! So today I'm very excited to share to you my 5 tips on how to take better pictures using Micro Four Thirds camera. These are all from my personal experience, from my own observations and hopefully they can help you to take better pictures using Micro Four Thirds camera and lenses. The reason why I make this video is because there are many people who are saying that Micro Four Thirds is not good, the small sensor really hinders you from taking good pictures and you're better off with an APS-C camera or a full frame or even a medium format camera. And I think that's not true. From my own personal experience, Micro Four Thirds has been a very wonderful camera system. You can check out my reasons of why I use Micro Four Thirds on the video above. By the end of this video, you will have a better idea of how to take better pictures, how to get better results using Micro Four Thirds camera and lenses so that you are becoming more confident with your Micro Four Thirds camera. As I mentioned earlier, some of these tips come from my own personal experience and that means I will not say things like go buy an expensive professional piece of glass. No, that's not my philosophy. Go buy an expensive professional great Micro Four Thirds camera. No, I'm not going to say anything like that either. I will just say something that you can really apply to your own uh, system, to your own gift if you only own a mid-range camera body or a beginner camera body. That's fine. If you don't own expensive pro level uh, lenses, it's also fine. It's no problem. We'll use whatever we have. And that's always been my philosophy to not go buy expensive stuff, but use whatever you already have. Now, with that said, now let's start with first tip. First tip is to bring your camera out with you more often. Not what you expect, right? Now, I know some of you might expect me to say things like shoot with the full manual settings, shoot using this picture profile and shoot using this aperture because it's the optimum aperture for your lens. No, I'm not going to say anything like that. I don't really think that will contribute significantly to taking better pictures using Micro Four Thirds. What I think will contribute to make you a better shooter using Micro Four Thirds camera is to bring your Micro Four Thirds camera out with you more often. Micro Four Thirds cameras and lenses, as we already know, are usually smaller compared to APS-C and full frame cameras and that enables you to uh, bring it with you uh, everywhere you go. You can bring a small camera like this, this is my Panasonic GX85 and a couple of lens, put it into a small sling bag and you're ready to shoot anything that comes your way and by bringing your camera more often, you'll have more practice and more practice means better pictures. In this sling bag right here, I have my Panasonic GX85 together with two extra lenses. One is a wide angle lens and one is a telephoto lens. And this is the kit that I usually brings with me whenever I go out. And I try to practice photography every day by bringing my Micro Four Thirds camera with me everywhere I go. And I documented some of the process of this photography time, I call it photography time, into some vlogs that you can check out above. This is my everyday photography challenge and you can watch the vlogs of how I explain to you my thought process of trying to take and capture a good picture. And I think this is a really nice practice for me and I really feel that although my pictures are not necessarily professional grade, I've, I'm able to benefit from the process of bringing my cameras every day with me everywhere I go and uh, by having better practice, I really think that my images are becoming better than they used to be. So yeah, please try this first tip. So bring your camera more often whenever you go out and try to have more practice so that your pictures become better. Next tip is to limit yourself to only using one focal length for a period of time. I always believe that a healthy restriction can make you a more creative person and that will help you to take better 
pictures. So many years ago, I tried to shoot only with a 12 millimeter focal length using my Panasonic 12 to 35 millimeter f2.8 lens. And by doing that for a couple of months, I was able to become very familiarized with the 12 millimeter focal lengths and develop what I call pre-visualization. So basically with pre-visualization, you are able to imagine at the focal length as you see a scenery. How wide is the focal length? How tight is the focal length? Will the focal length work with a certain kind of scenery or not? I was able to do that and that really helped me to uh, kind of become a better photographer in a way and that leads me to take better pictures. And with micro thirds, it's very easy to do that. There are lots of different kinds of lenses available in micro thirds. It's one of the most mature camera system, meaning that it has one of the most complete lens collection of all camera system. You want all kinds of zoom lens, you want all kinds of prime lens, you want all kinds of focal lengths, it's all available. And if you cannot find one focal length that works good enough for you, you can always attach different kinds of lenses from different kinds of camera formats easily into micro for this camera using adapters and whatnot. So yeah, uh, please try this tip and hopefully by familiarizing yourself with only one focal length for a certain period of time will help you to become more creative, become a better photographer, and you'll be able to take better pictures using your micro for this camera. Next tip, don't be afraid to use your micro for this camera to shoot in high ISO. Many people told me that micro footage sucks at high ISO, but I'm going to tell you otherwise. I frequently shoot using ISO 1600 or 3200 if I'm in lower light situation using my micro footage camera and I don't have any problems with the high ISO pictures of micro footage. Sure, they are not clean. You can definitely see some grain in your pictures, but they're not really that offensive in my opinion. They don't have that kind of weird colors going on on the noise. So I'm pretty fine with that. And besides, I really think that Missing a shot is much worse than getting a shot with some noise in it. So yeah, don't be afraid to shoot at higher ISO. I don't really think it's such a big deal for me. And I sometimes even shoot up to ISO 6400 with my micro Fortress camera. And getting the shot, I think is more important. Don't let high ISO becomes your excuse of not taking the shot. Also, you can force yourself to shoot more in high ISO, more in lower light situation using your micro four thirds camera, and you are forced to learn what works in high ISO, what doesn't work in high ISO, and that will definitely make you a better photographer, and also you will take better pictures using your micro four thirds camera. Next tip is to utilize many of the amazing micro thirds features that might not be available in other camera formats, such as in-body stabilizer, manual focus assist, and the quick, fast, and accurate single auto focus. So micro thirds has a lot of features that really helps to take better pictures in my opinion. And some of these features might be available in other format, but they are not implemented as well as in micro thirds. First, I wanna talk about in-body stabilizer, which is now very common in almost all micro thirds camera bodies, especially from mid-range, a level camera, all the way up to professional cameras. I have the Panasonic GX85 right here. This camera is probably about seven years old today, uh, but it has a very amazing, amazing in-body stabilizer. And it really helps to take pictures in lower light condition because I can use slower shutter speed and using slower shutter speed means lower ISO and lower ISO means better picture in my opinion. Well, yes, high ISO, I don't have any problem as I mentioned earlier with micro thirds. However, if you're able to shoot in lower ISO, that's always more preferable because you can get better quality out of your image. Now let's talk about autofocus. 
Well, yes, the continuous autofocus on most Micro Four Touch cameras usually sucks so bad that you cannot really use it. However, with single autofocus, the story is different. Uh, on my Panasonic GX85, on my older Panasonic GX8, on the G85 that's recording this video right now, single autofocus is actually very, very usable. In fact, it is very accurate, it is very fast, it is almost instantaneous which is quite the contrary compared to the continuous autofocus. So single autofocus is very reliable and with that kind of accuracy and speed, it, it can really help you to take better pictures. It can help you to take action pictures. It can help you to pinpoint the focus when you are taking your shot. And that really helps a lot to make better pictures using micro photos camera. If you are using manual focus lenses or if you're using autofocus lenses but you want to nail your focus using manual focus, fortunately, Micro Fortress has a lot of manual focus aids such as punch in zoom and peaking that you should really utilize to really, really nail your focus and get better pictures. So yeah, I'm quite sure that your Micro Fortress camera at least have one if not more of all the features that I just mentioned and you should really utilize all those features so that you can take better shots using Micro Four Thirds camera. Last but not least, to get better pictures out of your Micro Four Thirds camera, shoot in RAW format. I personally shoot in RAW every time I take picture using my Micro Four Thirds camera and I think you should shoot in RAW too whenever you're using Micro Four Thirds camera because you can squeeze every ounce of benefit out of your picture. You can pull shadows, you can pull highlight, you can add contrast, you can adjust color temperature, all that kind of enhancement that can only be possible if you're shooting in RAW. Personally, I use Adobe Lightroom to process my raw pictures and I think it is more than enough. If you want to check out my video right here, I explain how I usually process my Micro Four Thirds raw pictures in Adobe Lightroom. Go watch it right there. So yeah, shooting in raw format combined with properly post-processing your raw pictures using raw processing software such as Adobe Lightroom, DxO or Capture One or other raw processing software will definitely give you a better Micro Four Third picture. However, sometimes I use other softwares to further enhance my raw photos. Not necessarily my raw photos, but it's just part of my raw editing workflow. For example, if I have some trouble with really, really offensive noise caused by really low light condition combined with really high ISO, for example, ISO 25600, then I will use DxO Pure Raw to help me combat that offensive noise and give me a much cleaner picture. So it is something that the Lightroom cannot really do, a really, really high ISO noise, and DxO Pure Raw can really help with that. And also, if I want to make my pictures look a little bit more trendy, a little bit more visually appealing, I will sometimes apply film simulation. I use Dehancer for that right now. I really enjoy that software. And by using Dehancer, I was able to select film simulation that really matches the mood and the vibe of my pictures. So if you want to check out my video of using the Hanser, you can check it out right there. I really like using the Hanser and please go check out that video. Shooting raw is not really an obligation. It is optional. For you who prefer a faster workflow, definitely JPEG is the way to go. And you can definitely tweak some picture profile inside your camera if you're really into that sort of thing. However, for me personally, I always shoot raw. I think it's worth the hassle because I can really get much better pictures out of my raw pictures compared with using JPEG from my own personal experience. And that wraps up today's video. So that is all for today's video. I hope that today's video has been helpful for you, informative for you, and useful for you. Please comment down below. What are your tips for taking better pictures using Micro Four Thirds camera or any camera in that matter? Also, if you have any question about this video, please comment down below as well, and I will try my best to answer those questions. Also, don't forget to support my channel by liking this video, sharing this video, and subscribing to my channel down below. Thank you and see you on the next video. Goodbye.